While fine-tuning settings and focus often happens behind the scenes, software like Comfy UI and Automatic 1111's web interface require extensive configuration and user effort. Focus, however, streamlines this process by concealing most of the complexity, allowing you to concentrate on prompts and visuals. Therefore, these images showcase the limited settings available within Focus, accessible through the Advanced tab at the bottom. Clicking here will reveal a new section containing tabs named Settings, Style, Model, and Advanced. While we'll look into each of these in future lessons, for now, let's concentrate on the Settings tab. The first thing you will see is a selection of presets available added in the last update. These presets bundled makes easier and quicker switching between settings. If you select one that you haven't used, it will start downloading the models needed, like in my case I did not had Playground 2.5. The second setting is for performance. As the name suggests, it controls the trade-off between speed and quality in your generations. There are five options. First, extreme speed. This prioritizes the fastest generation possible, but at the cost of some quality. The other is quality. This prioritizes the highest quality output, but takes longer to generate. The default selected is speed. This balanced setting offers a good compromise between speed and quality for most use cases. There are two more performance options added in the last update, Lightning and HyperSD. Lightning, this new option, is designed to save time and resources by allowing for faster image generation without the need to download multiple large files specifically for the Lightning function. HyperSD enables hyper-fast image generation in 1024 pixel with stable diffusion models. I am still testing this. A smiling woman in a church in a wedding dress lets generate at quality performance. Here, the focus is on detail, particularly evident in the background. Look closely. Highlight specific detail in the background. This level of detail looks like photorealistic image. Let's generate again by changing the performance to extreme speed. As expected, prioritizing speed comes at a cost. Notice the loss of detail and issues with facial generation in sacrifice for speed. Let's use default speed setting in performance. Now this offers a nice balance, it delivers good quality results without sacrificing significant generation time. For most everyday uses, speed is the recommended choice, unless you require exceptionally detailed artwork or are fulfilling a large client order. Let's try the new Lightning setting in performance. The image quality is great compared to the time it took to generate the image. This uses new 4-step Lightning LoRa. This selected you will be able to use any regular SDXL model as a Lightning model similar to the extreme speed. However, it disables the negative prompt option and locks some of the options in the Advanced tab. Trying the HyperSD option, the newest one. It's in the form of LoRa's compatible with stable diffusion models and allows them to be used with 1 to 8 inference steps. HyperSD looks near to perfect with a good performance in reducing the number of steps required for image generation. Next is the aspect ratio. Seems straightforward. Simply click on your desired ratio to generate artwork in that format. 
It's worth noting that Focus automatically adjusts the subject to fit the chosen aspect ratio. For example, with a wider aspect ratio, you might get an upper body shot, while a narrower ratio might result in a full body image. Now, you might be curious, can I define a custom aspect ratio? Yes, but it involves a slightly more technical approach. Here's how you can do that. Locate the Focus installation directory. Navigate to the main folder containing all the program's files. Within this folder, you'll find two files named config file and config modification tutorial file. Let's open the tutorial file in a notepad and see for instructions. The instruction says we can use the below keys formats to modify the actual file, which is the config file. Let's scroll down for the key we want for our aspect ratio. The text, Available Aspect Ratios, is the key and the rest is its ratio value. Let's copy this and paste it in the actual config file as instructed. In config file, find the last value of the key ending with a quote. Now add a comma then paste the copied key from the tutorial file. Make sure the key you pasted is in double inverted quotes. Now in the aspect ratio value at the end. Give a comma and write down your needed ratio in double inverted quotes then save the file. In my case, I am writing 500 star 500. Let's restart the Focus instance. Here it is, our new aspect ratio of 500 pixels. Let's try generating a new image with a prompt girl at her wedding using our new aspect ratio. There it is, the image generated as per the said ratio. The next is image number, the name itself says. It specifies the number of image to be generated at a given prompt. Further, we can see that the output format is the image format to be generated. Negative prompts, unlike other software, Focus handles negative prompts differently. In most stable diffusion workflows, you typically write extensive negative prompts to exclude unwanted elements. For example, in front of us, the image generated is of an Indian girl at a wedding. Let's say we want anyone other than an Indian. Writing Indian in negative prompt will instruct the image generator to avoid generating such. Any action or adjective you include as a negative prompt will be excluded from the generated artwork. This allows you to refine specific details and achieve the desired outcome. This final checkbox controls whether you use a random seed or a specific one. A seed, similar to a unique ID in Stable Diffusion, determines the image generation process. You can say, it's the image ID. If kept unchecked with a seed ID, the same image will be generated to which image the ID belongs to. If you say, why do we need this? It's very helpful if you forgot a prompt or needed to recall the settings of a previous image you generated. Or, let's say, you want to generate an image very close to the one seed ID you have. For example, the image I generated, if I want a blonde girl in the same image, I can specify in the prompt and generate. It's impressive that the generated image looks so similar to our original one. 
However, you can't use this to create consistent characters. Stable diffusion at its core is a mathematical process, and even with identical prompts, settings, and negative prompts, the internal calculations like solving a visual puzzle can vary, leading to different outputs. If you want to see the work you've done for the day, you can check on the history log button, and it will show all the images you generated within that day along with the prompts, resolutions, and all the other information related to that image you may need. You can start working on any older image with the seed ID available here. We've now covered everything in the Settings tab. You should now be able to control the speed of your generation, balancing it between speed and quality. You've also learned how to adjust the resolution of your artwork, add new resolutions, change the image count, exclude unwanted details from your image, and generate an image similar to your previous one. That's all for today. Don't hesitate to experiment with these settings to learn more, and I'll see you in the next lesson.